Welcome to the BioBalance HealthCast, Episode 597. Don't trust your lab's reference ranges. BioBalance HealthCast features conversations about anti-aging medicine. Your host is Dr. Kathy Moffat, Medical Director of BioBalance Health and a leading expert in treating symptoms of aging. Dr. Maupin is the author of The Secret Female Hormone, the seminal work about testosterone replacement therapy for women, and Got Testosterone, the award-winning book for men that helps men choose the most effective and safe form of testosterone replacement. These books are available on Amazon or from Dr. Maupin's office at BioBalance Health in St. Louis and in Kansas City. Dr. Maupin's office is currently accepting new patients. I'm going to talk today about the overall problem that we have with lab tests when we are trying to explain them to you and how it relates to your situation. Lab tests were always meant to be given to a doctor to interpret, and there are several reasons for that. Um, That partially is because the doctor should interpret it, in terms of you, you as an individual, not you as every person who's out there. And the doctor should interpret it as to healthy normals versus average, average for the population. Um, If we looked at all of our labs as average for the population, our population's pretty sick and obese right now. So do we want to make everybody um, that same thought of, um, in terms of education, we want to lower education to the lowest level so that everybody will, will be taken care of? Or do we want to have everybody try to get to a healthy level and then people who don't want to be healthy, eh, that's their option and that is, that's their, that's, that's their choice. So I believe that we should all be given a choice. Do we want to try to be healthy? And if we do, what is the level of each lab test that indicates health? So that's the part I'm explaining because I have to explain it every day to my patients. When they come in and sit down and we talk about their different symptoms and their different problems and their hormones that are causing these problems and other things that are causing the problems, Then we go over the lab tests one by one, and I say, this test, you're very healthy. This is a good level. You know, we don't have to work on this. This is good. And then we go through each test that way, and then we get to one that isn't so good. And then I have to tell them why it isn't so good and what they should do about it. But I find myself crossing out the lab's normals. And here are the problems with the lab's normals. And today I'm just going to go through the reason there's a problem and not give you all of the detail and all of the, um, all of the examples. I'll do that next week. It was just, it's too big for me to tackle in, in the amount of time that I should have in a health cast and to keep your attention. The first thing that I'll tell you is that we use LabCorp and Quest. We do not advocate using hospital labs because they sometimes are out of date. They sometimes leave off the tests I need because they don't perform them. They, um, one of the hospitals has residents, so they, they act like I'm a resident and they scratch off certain tests and say, I don't know, uh, that guy doesn't need a, an estrogen test. Well, yeah, he does because men make estrogen too. So, so I choose the two best. <laughs> that I can find, but it's not just that. It's, it's about, even though I don't agree with them on a lot of their reference ranges, with the, which we all equiv- make equivalent to normal, I know that they are paid for by my patient's insurance. So that's a biggie. I have to find a lab that's paid for by my patient's insurance to lower the cost for them. I also want to know if they have drawing centers all over the United States, because I have patients that come from all over the United States. And that is the two qualities that I need to make my patients happy. And that is have their costs covered by insurance, as it should be, and also be able to get to a lab so that I can get their panel before they even travel to see me. 
Some of these tests take a few days or a week. So I have to have them drawn before, and I have to have a fasting blood test, which a lot of doctors don't do, but fasting tells me, gives me a baseline, a, um, it's a leveling agent. Everybody who's fasting, I can compare them. I don't know if you ate a donut or if you didn't eat. I can't compare that's apples and oranges. I need to have people fasting so that I can tell on the tests that are um, changed by eating and what you eat, then I can compare you to normal on an even playing field. And I hope that makes sense. So even though these labs are good, they give, send me back their results. And generally, they don't miss tests. And generally, um, they don't send me the results um, of a man for a woman's normals or anything like that. But um, they do have problems with how they write their reference ranges, which all of us as doctors call normal. So generally when you look at a lab test, you're going to, a doctor is going to see, and this isn't, this is my notes, is going to see a column here that says what the test is, and then a column here that is going to give you your normal, your, your range, if it is what they consider in the reference range, and it's going to be over here if it's outside the reference range. And then the reference range will be over here. So we're just looking at columns or patterns. And a lot of times that's all a doctor needs for whatever they're doing. However, when we're looking at hormones and when we're looking at tests that tell me if you're healthy enough for hormones or if you're healthy and or not, and can I help you be healthy, uh, I need to have more than that. I can't just look at columns and say, yeah, that's you're okay. And you don't want me to do that. You want to know, out of all those 18 or 19 tests that I did, what was good and what was bad about them. And that's what I try to do. So one of the problems that I have with these tests is that if gender, and they know the gender, they put the gender on the top of the, on the, top of the um, lab sheet, they put that into their computer. If the gender changes what is considered normal, for a test, then in general, they don't put gender differences. They just leave it on the male, in the male ranges. So I have to change certain tests like thyroid and like lipid panels for the women's normals and the men's normals. This is very confusing to people, but that's why I'm explaining it now. All of the cholesterol tests were originally and still are obtained, the reference ranges or what they consider healthy, is obtained from men. They did not even start putting women in FDA trials of drugs or in studies to see what was normal for us till 2014. That's a little late, and that's what causes us to have these problems with men's normals and women's normals not being on our sheets. They still have the men's normals there. So for every woman, I have to say, no, don't worry about that. Don't let somebody put you on a statin for that because especially women have a lot of HDL. So if your HDL is high, then that's a good thing. That's not a bad thing. If your LDL is a little high, your HDL is high, that's protecting you so you're not at risk. This is hard to explain when the total looks high just because your HDL was high. So I have to explain that every day, all day long, that this test is not a test for women. For men, I just go down the test just like I would for anybody else because those numbers are the numbers that are considered healthy. However, I also have the caveat, and we'll go over this next time, that sometimes it's not just your lipids that cause heart disease. So we'll go over that a little bit at another date. Um, there are gender-specific tests that are separated by male and female, and they are in the health tests like the blood count. They literally will make a woman's healthy 
hemoglobin and hematocrit lower than a man's because women bleed. Women have periods. Women, from the time that they're 12 until the time they go through menopause, they are having periods. And so their hemoglobin is a lot lower. It doesn't mean it's healthier to be lower. It just means the average cycling female has a lower hemoglobin. Okay, that doesn't affect too many people, but my patients who are not cycling and who are, they're either menopausal or they have had their uterus removed, their hemoglobins are in the men's range and they put high next to them because they're up in the men's range. Well, I have a clue for you. The minute somebody stops bleeding and is female, her normals or her healthy level of hemoglobin goes up to the same level as men's. So this is making women feel like they've got too much hemoglobin or too much too, too high a hematocrit when it's not even high. That's a problem. And that's one of the problems that I need to explain to my patients. Um, one of the other things that it has a different range for women where they assume a woman is bleeding is something called ferritin. Ferritin is a test that we do because we give testosterone and testosterone increases the iron absorption in your body, therefore increases your hemoglobin and hematocrit and also can increase your ferritin, which is, is a test that tells you how much iron you have in your body. Now, there's, there's a small subset of the population who have... Uh, hemochromatosis, mouthful, but that is a person who has too much iron in their body and they're storing it in their tissues like their liver or their eyes or their testicles or their ovaries and it's damaging those, those different tissues. So you need to know who has that and a screening test for that is ferritin. Well, women's ferritin levels have a very low range that is considered normal because women are usually low on iron if they're bleeding every month because they have to keep replacing it. Now, if you are not bleeding every month and you're a woman, then your range should go up to the men's range, but they leave it at the lower range. So women are told their ferritin is too high, that they may have hemochromatosis when they are just within the men's range. So a misdiagnosis because they haven't adjusted for somebody not having periods. That's how important this is. And that wastes a lot of money and time and fear on part of the patient. Some blood, blood tests are dependent on a patient fasting. And fasting insulin is one of them. Fasting insulin has two problems. The fasting insulin that they give us on the Quest Lab, which is the one I can remember, is 29 insulin. However, tests done over 15 years ago, a big study was done on what a normal fasting insulin should be if you don't have diabetes or prediabetes or anything like that, and it should be less than 10. That was never updated on any of the labs, and it still is 29. Well, 29 is really more accurate for somebody who is not fasting. But once again, I don't want to have people not fasting because in these tests, I need to have a level playing field where nobody is eating and I can compare to normal and not depend on what somebody ate. Like if you ate, I don't know, a Ted Drew's, you know, custard before you came in and got your blood drawn, triglycerides are going to be high, your cholesterol is going to be high, and, and you, uh, you are going to have lipids that are very high, but you're also going to have a huge fasting insulin. Well, do you have insulin resistance? Or did you just eat a lot of something with sugar in it and, and fat in it? So that's why I have people fast. I know it's a big hassle. I hate to fast too. Uh, but it's important. And they don't correct for fasting or not fasting at the right level uh, on both of these labs. Okay. Some tests don't, don't use a scientific method of of using healthy young people to test to determine their, um, their ranges of what is considered normal healthy. So that's how we used to always test tests 
uh, or how we used to get a group of scientifically accurate people to test to see where we should have a normal range or a healthy range. Young, healthy, usually they were men. Well, that what they do now is cheaper. They don't have to gather people. They don't have to pay them to get their blood tested. They don't, they don't have to find young men who are healthy and you know, don't have head injuries, other things. So what they do now is at these labs, they take your... Um, take all of the lab tests they've done for thyroid, say. They put them into um, basically a pile, and it's, it has all to do with um, numbers. They determine from all the people that came in and got their thyroid tested um, what the average level was. Well, they don't determine whether they're healthy, if they're on thyroid, if they have hyperthyroidism, if they've been given... PTU to lower their thyroid, they take everybody. Every thyroid that's passed through their lab goes into this bell curve, and it can be the reason you're not, you're not treated. Because the level of thyroid has been going down every year that I've watched it. The free T3 and the free T4, which is an accurate, it should be an accurate number <coughs> of how much active T3 and T4 you have, so they have been dropping and dropping and dropping. So if you have a very low level that's considered normal, then people who have a low, no a low level and have symptoms aren't treated because most doctors just look at the lab. They don't look at the patient and say, do you have any of the symptoms of low thyroid? So that's another problem. They're using economics to get a cheaper bell curve and they're looking at the community. Well, I live in the goiter belt, so everybody's going to have low thyroid around here because there's no iodine in the soil. So they shouldn't be looking at it that way either. They should be looking at well-iodinized people who have um, normal thyroids, no goiters, no nothing, and no hair loss, and no, they're not cold all the time. All of those things should be negative when they test for the perfect thyroid level but they're not doing that. So that's another problem. So we put in our normal levels. Um, we, I discussed the ranges are out of date often, like the insulin level is out of date. Um, the t this is my, the last category of problems with the lab test is that the, is that the FSH and LH and the estrogen levels are based on your age. So they don't do this for the ferritin or the iron or anything else that is, is uh, changed by whether you're menopausal or not. But if you're menopausal, any estrogen down to zero is considered normal. And any FSH and LH goes up. It doesn't matter really how high it is. I guess there's some high level that they consider too high. But they give you a, they put it in the normal column. They say, ah, it's normal. So most doctors who don't do hormones are going, yeah, your hormones are fine. Well, they're not fine. You were healthy when your FSH and LH were normal down below 23 throughout your cycle and down below 10 for LH. But you're not normal when your FSH is 105. Well, they say, yep, you're normal because you're menopausal. That's average so they're making average for a menopausal woman healthy, which is not true. So that's another place where I have to write in the normals, and then patients are questioning, why am I doing that? Estradiol should be, just like it was when you were having cycles, 60 to 250 in that range. And even if you're menopausal, if you're taking hormones, it should be 60 to 250. Well, if it's zero, it's okay in their, in their book. They say zero is fine because you're menopausal. So they're not saying it's healthy. They're just saying it's average for your age. So this is what we're going to talk about in greater detail next health test. And I will give you more examples and things that you can look at your lab um, and actually help interpret for you since nobody else seems to be interpreting it. Uh, it'll give you a better grasp of your own health and if you need to have something done. Thank you for listening. I'll be back next week. 
Email your questions or comments to podcast at biobalancehealth.com. You can find the BioBalance HealthCast on iTunes and on YouTube. For more information about bioidentical hormone pellet therapy and other reverse aging solutions, visit biobalancehealth.com or call 314-993-0963. You can find Dr. Maupin on Twitter at Dr. Kathy Maupin and on Facebook at facebook.com slash biobalancehealth.